What is up with the squad? It's favorite on TV with Uncle Tennessee's, and I am here with a weekend sports recap. Just recapping all of the things that I got to check out this weekend. Uh, watch some pretty good sports. Watch some pretty good sports. Watch a little bit of everything, some NBA, some WNBA, some uh, some boxing. Even watch a little bit of uh, some highlights of some track and field. Uh, but, but, but I want to start off with these Minnesota Timberwolves. Minnesota versus defending champs. In Denver, 106-99, Minnesota Timberwolves. If you said that probably at the beginning of the season, nobody would have believed you. But nobody thought the Ant-Man was coming like he's coming. Anthony Elridge, 43-17-29 from the field, seven rebounds, three assists. He is him. He's not playing around. They beat Denver in Denver for the second time this season. Listen, y'all, this is not a fluke. This is not a fluke. This is not a fluke, okay? This is not a drill. This is for real, okay? It was tied up at 84. And, and and Minnesota went on a run, and it wasn't even Ant-Man that went on a run. It's Nas Reed went on a run. Sixth man of the year. Game 10 straight. Finished over 14 in the fourth, okay? I didn't, I didn't give Wolves enough credit. I didn't give the Timberwolves enough credit, I'll be honest. I didn't expect them to be able to get the production that they're getting from all three of their seven-footers. And if they continue to play like this, Denver's in trouble. They can beat Denver in a seven-game series. I didn't, I didn't think anybody could beat Denver in a seven-game series, but I didn't see anybody using uh, three seven-footers the way they are using them. Uh, against Jokic. You can tell that the pressure and the pace that they were using, both on offense and defense, by the Joker. Uh, and they it, for, for Denver to be successful, they're going to need big minutes out of Joker on both ends of the floor. And I, I don't know if he can keep that up for a seven-game type series. Min Minnesota's bigs, oh, they're working really well against Joker, and they're working really well together. Gobert definitely can just focus on defense. And Big Cat, he playing his game. On both ends of the floor, on both both ends of the floor, he's playing some really good defense against Joker, and then he got into some foul trouble. He's going to need to keep that under control, but the bigs are playing very well uh, against the Joker. I really like the addition of Mike Conley to this team. I think, like I said the other day, he is exactly uh, what, they need him to, what, him, what they need him to be. He's doing everything that they need him to do. He's keeping things calm. And he also gave him 14 points and 10 assists. He's going to be efficient. He's not going to take bad shots. Uh, he's going to make good decisions. Uh, <clears throat> And you can count on him to talk and share what he's seeing on the floor with other players. He's got a lot of experience in the playoffs, so that, that'll be helpful for them. Um, but Mike Conley, great pickup, great pickup for, for the Timberwolves. And the problem is exactly as I expected, y'all. Who is going to guard Ant-Man? Who's going to guard Anthony Edwards? He's a 22-year-old problem. You hear me? I just love this young man. He can do everything. Pull up, post up, drive, finish through the contact. He got the defense for you. Athleticism is crazy. Hops out of this world. Confidence, okay? He brings the confidence with him every every game. His bag is deeper than most, y'all. His bag, his bag is deeper than most. But impo most importantly, this young man got the right mindset. He got the right the right the right mindset, and that's what make that's what makes him the winner. In his mind, he's already won when he hit the when he hit the floor. Uh, but but back to who's gonna guard this kid? I saw attempts by KCP Jamal Murray who. Didn't have a game that I expect from Jamal Murray. I expect him to have a, a better game next next game next next go around. Reggie Jackson, Aaron Gordon, they're not answers for, for Anthony Edwards. They're not they're not answers answers for Anthony Edwards at all. No answers. And if they're gonna win, if if, if the Timberwolves are gonna be able to have Anthony Edwards go off like he's going off and win the bench points and the paint points, it's gonna be tough for Denver. It's gonna be really tough for Denver. Uh, I don't know who won the rebounding. Uh, who won the rebound award between these two teams? But uh, bench points and paint points both went to both went to Minnesota, and that that that's a problem for Denver. Uh, Ant Man, he him y'all. He's the best two way player in the game. Georgia, stand up. Best best two way player in the game. And, and I'm not saying I'm not calling for the brooms yet because Mike Malone is gonna make some adjustments. This is just a this is just a quiet FAFO notice, y'all. The series has started. The first home game has been lost. Okay, and it's time. Y'all, y'all watch. I, I believe that uh, I told y'all before it was the end of an era. And I think it's a coordination going on. Everybody, pay attention. Ant Man coming. The next, the next, uh, the next uh, game that I got to watch was the uh, the Sparks and the Seattle Storm game. And I'm not gonna talk too much about the uh, the Seattle Storm. I think that they're still figuring it out. Uh, I was reminded to, that they they have some players out. Um, I felt like it was a lot of veterans on the team. 
<clears throat> I felt like they played really well in the first half. They looked tired in the second half. I don't know if that was age, if that was being out of shape, combination of, of both, and then not having some some key pieces. So not really going to put a put a grade on what I saw to Seattle yet. Uh, I'm, I'm really anxious to see how all of that fix, fits together and how they're able to manage uh, all of the different um, talents that they have and skill sets that they have in Seattle. So I'm, I'm going to wait before before I talk about them. But I definitely want to talk about these Sparks because y'all know I've been looking for them, especially uh, Rakia Jackson for, uh, for, for the past few weeks in the daytime with a flashlight, okay? Kurt Miller, he seems to be bringing the Sparks along at a good pace. I'm glad that we got a chance to see them. Cameron Brink, she started and she played great. I, I didn't see a number two pick. Uh, caliber in her at Stanford. I, I'll be honest. Uh, we talked about that before, but she is fitting in here. Uh, and not just from a brand and, and, and a face of the, the organization look perspective, but as a player and proving me wrong, uh, actually look more comfortable as a WNBA player than any time I've seen her on the floor as a, as a Stanford Cardinal. Uh, she seems to be genuinely excited and really just enjoying the game <clears throat> and enjoying this process. And, um, uh, as I, as I heard on a TV show that I don't remember which one it was, maybe All-American, uh, really like being, uh, uh, what I think they said, be at where your feet at. She's really being at where her feet at. She's really here in the moment. Uh, Rakia Jackson, I told you all about her. She didn't start. Um, I, I felt like there were moments in the game where she looked comfortable, and then there was moments in the game where she didn't look comfortable. Uh, some adjustments that she's going to have to do. But um, when she got in the game, and she did come off the bench. She gave him 10. Uh, even though even, even though she didn't start, she was able to, to give them 10 points in critical minutes. Um, they, they they had to come they had to come back uh, for the win. And both both Cameron and, and Rakia, I think, um, contributed contributed in that process. Uh, she even got a chance to hit some get somebody some of that uh, one leg turnaround work. So I was glad to see that. Um <clears throat> The off the court time together that the team seems to be spending together seems to be uh, helping them get get to know each other and build confidence, chemistry, uh, and culture. The Sparks uh, can make some real noise this season. I think both uh, Brink and Jackson are going to make the team. I feel like Cameron um, really played well with uh, Derricka. I think that that one two punch um, really looked good. Uh, and the, and this is just a preseason game. I know that we're still figuring this stuff out, but I I did like that, and I thought that I thought that Lexi Brown looked good. So. Um, as they continue to build that culture uh, with the Sparks, I'm, I'm excited to see uh, how they how they mix the veterans and the uh, and the rookies together. And then I'm also, of course, seeing uh, how how Zaya Cook does if, if she's going to be able to stay uh, at, at the LA Sparks or or land someplace else. I think they uh, are a little guard are a little guard heavy uh, right now. Interesting to see how they're going to use Rakia. <clears throat> she be a big guard with a Try to put her at a three. Uh, gonna be gonna be interesting to see how they use her. So I'm interested to see what Kurt does there. But um, like what I saw so far, uh, looking for them to continue to get a little to get more comfortable and and, and start to see more of their skill set uh, come naturally into the flow of the game. Uh, Rakia mentioned um, just the download of information that she's taken in over the last week or so, just getting started. So as she gets more comfortable with the things that she's learned about the the organization and, and the offense and what, what is expected of her. I, I think that we're going to continue to see her numbers go up and I, I expect the same for, for, for camera. So excited to see uh, where they go and, and what they get done. And <clears throat> Canelo versus Munguia. Listen, y'all know I had to, I had to check the fight out. I didn't get to see it right from the beginning, but I got to see enough of it to know uh, it never really turned into a fight. Y'all it never really turned into the fight. I expected it was some action uh, I felt like Canelo dropped dropped Munguia off a perfect shot, perfect uppercut, beautiful uppercut that he didn't see coming. But for the most part, you know, they traded shots, both took shots. Uh, Canelo got caught with some, uh, and he definitely gave Munguia some shots. But the fight was never in question. Alvarez is uh, 61 and, and 2 and 2, 39 knockouts. This was the fourth defense of his uh, undisputed super middleweight title. Uh, it was typical masterful uh, Canelo performance, uh, and he gave he he erased the O from Munguia, gave him his first uh, first first loss. Uh, Canelo at thirty three, you know, won on all the judges' scorecards. The, the fight was never in question. One seventeen, one ten, one sixteen, one eleven, one fifteen, one twelve. Uh, um, well, I think it was CBS. Somebody gave him one eighteen, one oh nine. 
Uh, and McGee, McGee has started pretty hot. He he started pretty hot. He's uh, Freddie Roach trained. Uh, he was never he was never really the same <clears throat> after after uh, Canelo Canelo caught him with the shot in in the fourth round. Uh, I felt like he took Canelo's he took Canelo's power pretty well. Like I said, the shot he caught him with was a perfect shot. The shots that he saw coming rocked him, but didn't but didn't uh, put him back down on the ground. Uh, and it was a lot of it was a lot of phone booth action. It was a lot of phone booth action. I think that Canelo kind of caught Munguia just as he was trying to come on, just as he was starting to uh, get a little steam behind behind his his his, uh, his punches and and his uh, I think getting to his spots and starting to really kind of execute his strategy. Just as Canelo kind of felt that coming on, he he set him down in the fourth, and he never really got back uh, all the way back into the fight. I don't think uh, uh, talking about Munguia here. Um, I think ultimately once, uh, Canelo adjusted to the timing, um, he was able to kind of just do dominate the fight. Uh, I was kind of impressed with, uh, the, the accuracy of, of some of Canelo's, uh, counter shots. Uh, some the speed was there at times, but at times he looked, uh, a step slower than I'm used to. Uh, but of course, that could just be with, with, with father time starting to creep in. I felt like Munguia's chin was uh, better than maybe even Canelo thought, although uh, he, he showed some speed and, and landed some shots. Uh, Canelo seemed comfortable kind of kind of walking through those shots to give the shots he wanted. Like I said, it, it wasn't an explosive fight at all. I, I'm not seeing any reasons for a rematch or anything like that. Uh, Canelo continues to, uh, <clears throat> I think, you know, moves closer to the end of his fight. To the end of his fight career, and as he's starting to move, move, move there. Um, who are the fighters uh, that you, that you still think he needs to check off um, before he gets out of the game? I don't, I don't know that there's anybody that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, Benavidez, I, I don't think he fights Benavidez, um, but you know, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, he let us know that he feel he really feels like he is at the at the top of sport right now. He can do whatever he wants to do, so it's going to be interesting to see what direction he goes in. Benavidez was there ringside. Um, but, but it didn't like, it didn't look like they were headed towards a fight. And I, I don't know that uh, he's going to, he's going to fight Benavidez. I heard Bud Crawford, but Crawford, I, I don't want to see Bud come up and fight uh, Canelo unless he's going to stay at that weight and, and uh, dominate, dominate there um, just to come up to fight Canelo. I, I don't, I don't want to see that, but <clears throat> I don't know either if it's a lot of other interesting fights out there for Bud after we, after the, the, uh, the uh the stoppage that he put on that he put on Errol Spence. So it'd be interesting to see what they what they both do. Um but we're gonna continue to cover boxing and kind of grow this part of the uh, part of the, the channel out. Uh we got ringside with being uh premiere next Saturday with a live chat for Lomachenko versus Cambosis on our our warm up our tune up I guess you'll call it before the big fight June fifteenth with uh Tank Davis and Frank Martin. Come hang out with us in the chat. We got some exclusive Sess Talk Sports uh, Tank versus the Ghost uh, T-shirts that, that we're going to have uh, available just to kind of commemorate the big fight. Of course, we are live on Mondays at 9 with now joining the conversation. Always live on Thursdays at 9 with Sess Talk Sports um, and live on Sundays with the Family Hangout. It's going to be probably at about 9 p.m. as well. <clears throat> so come hang out with us. Uh, also, this Wednesday, we are having a special hangout uh, with uh, Kansas Basketball Academy. We're going to be talking uh, what is good coaching, so come hang out with us on that dual channel live. Uh, show, show the support for both Kansas Basketball Academy and, and joining that conversation. Um, this Monday, following our regularly scheduled now, now joining the conversation, we will be doing an extended live, hanging out for the Denver-Minnesota game. It's going to be game two of the playoffs, so come hang out with us if this kind of content you are interested in, this kind of stuff you like to talk about, come on over to SS Talk Sports, y'all. Hit that subscribe, ring that notification bell, jump in that conversation, share the videos, uh, help us grow this platform. Each one, invite one. Um, let's grow this conversation around women's basketball and uh, let people know that everybody watches women's sports. I'm going to get on out of here, y'all. It's your favorite IT with Uncle Tendencies. Until next time, stay tuned. Talk soon, y'all. I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.